this video, I will show you how to take a front, back, and sleeve block for torso or bodice and create a, a Rugland sleeve uh, pattern out of it. A Rugland sleeve is different from a set-in sleeve, which is what we have uh, in front of us now, because it does not have um, a defined shoulder line. The shoulder line is incorporated into the sleeve, and the seam goes from the bottom of the armhole to somewhere towards the base of the neck on front and back. You can also design styles where, let's say, the front of the garment could have a ruglan and the back could have a regular part of the sleeve. I will show you the very basic and very simple method um, of converting a regular pattern into a ruglan. We will have to make adjustments to the sleeve, the front and back of the block. I'm going to start with the simplest. I'm going to start with the sleeve. Please note that I'm not making any adjustments for lowering of the armhole for comfort. I'm just working with the pattern that I have because the point of this uh, video is to show you what to do uh, to create a rug one pattern. So this is my basic sleeve. This sleeve can be of any length. Mine is very short to save paper. And I have the front very clearly marked with a single notch. And I have the back very clearly marked with a double notch. I also have the, the top of the sleeve at the center and the bottom of the sleeve. And I have drawn a line, which is a center of my sleeve. This is also my train line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold the sleeve in half, right on the center line, like this. Okay, the sleeve is now folded in half. And I will use a red marker to make all the changes. So from the top of my sleeve, I am going to measure down four inches. And I'm just going to make a mark. Okay, four inches like this. And now I am going to create um, a shape which will remind you of a dart. The dart point, or zero, will be where I just marked four inches down. This is four inches down. And the top will have maybe half an inch taken at each side. I'm taking maybe, I'm saying maybe, taking a half an inch at each side because this is an average measurement for an average uh, shape of a shoulder and arm. Uh, you will try this on and it's possible that when you have a test fitting of a muslin for this, you probably will make adjustments. So what I'm doing, I'm going half an inch on each side of the center okay and now i am going to draw a curved dart you're familiar with curved darts the legs of the dart are going to cave in so this is going to be a concave dart it doesn't have to be very steep but it looks better uh, when it's a concave dart so this is what i'm going to do and your little dart will look like this do you see the line? I will take detailed photos um, after. And um, I'm now going to cut this dart out. Just as the sleeve is folded in half, follow the lines. It's folded in half. You only have to mark it on one side. Just make a little cut in the shape of a dart. And when you unfold the sleeve, it now looks like this. I have just created a concave dart, which is the widest at the top where the center of the sleeve was at the top of the cap and it comes to zero or dart point four inches below the top the sleeve is now ready and i'm just going to uh, put it aside until i'm ready for it i'm going to work with the front now this is the front of my bodice or the top part of um, a torso uh, when you're working with ruglands, as I mentioned, we need to design a shape that goes from the bottom of the armhole and it goes all the way somewhere to the center, to the middle, uh, to the base of the neck, the base of the shoulder. We have a dart, which is quite large for me, for my size, um, and I cannot work with this pattern until the dart is transferred somewhere else. Where can you put this dart? It's completely up to you. If you want to create the ruglan and then decide if you want to put it into the bust or if you want to put it into the neck as a design feature, if you want it to put it into the center, it's completely up to you. But I know, for me, 
I usually need a bust dart, so I'm going to transfer it to the bust, to the, to the bust area. So I am on my side seam. I'm marking two inches below my armhole, and I'm going to draw a line to the apex. And the apex is a dart point of my shoulder bust dart. So now I am going to cut through one of the legs of the dart, the shoulder dart. Does not matter which leg. Okay, I'm going to actually cut it out so that the excess paper is not confusing. So I'm completely cutting out this dart. Okay, so now it looks like this. The dart is now gone. And I will go and cut from the side seam and two, but not through the apex. I'm going to leave a little tiny hinge of paper so that I can close the dart and not lose the shape. You can see that I have a little hinge and now I need to close this dart. Completely close the shoulder dart so that I have a continuous smooth shoulder and I gave myself a bust dart at the side of the garment. I have prepared my front uh, for Raglan alteration and now I need to do the same thing on the back. You can see that um, my uh, torso or bodice um, block has a shoulder dart and I cannot keep it here because I need to work with a dartless shoulder. And I know that I actually need some kind of a dart here to, uh, to um, shape my shoulder uh, and back curve. So I have many options. If I want, uh, I can transfer this dart into here into the waist dart. I can transfer it temporarily into the neck or into the armhole, but armhole is not ideal because armhole is going to be involved in the alteration for the raglan. So I think I'm going to transfer it into the neck for now just to get it out of my way. So how I would do that, I'm just going to point my dart towards the neck like this. I'm not sure you can see. So it looks like this now. And I am going to cut out the shoulder dart completely. Completely cut it out. So it looks like this. I will bring it closer so you can see. Do you see that? And I have my marking right here where I want the new dart to go temporarily because I'm not yet sure where the final dart will go. And so I decided to open up the future neck dart. And do you see, now I'm successfully closing the shoulder dart and I'm going to keep this shut. So I need to work with a completely smooth shoulder and not worry about a dart there. I cannot have a dart in the shoulder. So my front, back, and sleeve now um, are ready for the raglan alteration. I'm going to start with the sleeve. The sleeve needs one more little thing. Um, I have opened up this concave dart, and I have a notch marking the front and a notch marking the back. But just in case, you know, I get confused or something gets cut off, I'm going to say this is front and this is back. It's just as more as... Um, the more obvious I make it, the better it's going to be because now I am going to cut it exactly in the, along that center line to separate the front and the back part. Now I have two parts that look like this and both are clearly marked. I'm going to start working on the front. I have the front part of the sleeve and I have my front which is uh, set up for uh, a set-in sleeve. So, how do we create easily and without too much um, pain? Uh, how do we create a raglan out of this? What you need to do is take your half of the sleeve, which is the front, and line it up with the tip of the shoulder. We have the tip of the shoulder and we have the tip or the, the very top center of the sleeve. And you see, if you put it together like this, 
I've connected the tip of the shoulder to the top of the sleeve. I have this huge open area here and I don't want that. Because if this is going to be my raglan, I'm going to have all this extra fabric and it's going to make a bubble um, just at the front armhole area. I don't want that. Now, if I connect it, if I hold it at this at the level of the shoulder, if I connect it like this, let's say, I have a lot of length opening up at the top and I don't want that either. What I want is what I call a sweet spot, that perfect balance where you have a little bit showing at the front and a little bit showing at the back. So the important thing is to keep the center of top of the sleeve to the center top of the shoulder. So let's see how we can connect it. There. I have found this sweet spot where I'm going to try and bring the camera a little bit closer. What I have here is a little bit of the opening at the top and some about the same amount opening at the bottom. I will try to hold it here and I will try to bring the camera closer. Do you see it there? I have some opening at the top, some opening at the bottom. I'm going to set the camera down, hopefully without dropping it. There we are. And where it connects, I am going to tape it like this. It connects right here. I have taped it. Another very important thing for me to mark, so I've connected it here. And I need to mark on the sleeve and on my garment where it connects with the bottom part of the sleeve. I'm going to hold it and I will bring the camera closer again. Do you see that? I marked here, there is a red dot right here where my balance or my sweet spot is. And I also put a cross right here where the bottom of part of the sleeve has connected with the armhole of the bodice. I'm going to set the camera, there we are. And now I can design my raglan line. So the raglan line will go not from the bottom of the armhole or the bottom of the sleeve. It's gonna go from where I put the red cross. The red cross marks the spot where I can start designing my raglan line. So what I have here, you can take a ruler and where does the raglan go? Anywhere you want. You can put it to the middle of the neck. You can put it towards the, 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 the base of the neck at the shoulder. You can even design a yoke. You can have a raglan that goes into a yoke. But you can make it a straight line. So let's say if we do a simple raglan like this, where um, we take it to the middle of the neck. Or what I really like, when I like it when raglan is a slight curve. I think it looks a lot better on the body. So just somewhere to the middle of the neck, I'm making a red line. And that's going to be my raglan. You see this line right here is the raglan. I'm going to bring the camera closer. You see that? This is the line of my raglan. And now I'm going to set the camera down and I'm going to cut this part off. Before I do that though, and again, I'm worried that things are going to start falling apart, I'm going to say front here, okay? And I'm going to cut it. Okay, completely cut it off. So what I have now is I have a piece that looks like this and I have the rest of my bodice, okay? My bodice looks like this and my future raglan sleeve goes like this. So there is nothing really for me to do for the front. I just need to add a seam allowance, so I will put it aside. But I'm going to put a little bit more tape on this because it's kind of fragile. And I will tape it like this and from the other side. There, now I'm not worried. So the raglan sleeve now looks like this. This is 
This is the hem of the sleeve. This is the side seam of the sleeve. This is the bottom of the armhole and it goes into the raglan. This is going to be part of my neck. This is the future shoulder and this is the center of the sleeve with a concave dart cut in. Okay, I'm going to put this one aside and we're going to work now on the back. The back has exactly the same process repeated. I have my back part of the sleeve, it's clearly marked, and I have my bodice part of the back with the dart on the shoulder closed and transferred temporarily into the neck. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to line up the top of the sleeve, this area right here, with the center of the shoulder, the top of the shoulder, so they're not lower or higher. And I'm going to look for that balance or sweet spot. You see, if I connect it like this, it's even more obvious, do you see, on the back? All of this is going to give me a very unattractive uh, excess fabric. If I close it like this, I'm going to have extra length for the sleeve and I don't really need that. What I need is balance. So I am keeping my finger where the top center sleeve touches the top center of the back and I found it. I have a little bit of an opening at the top, about the same width of the opening at the bottom. I found my sweet spot. And now I'm putting tape here, okay? So this is my balance or my sweet spot, the big red dot. And where I put the cross, is where the sleeve touches the bodice. I'm going to bring the camera closer so you can see. Do you see that? I have a red dot right here. This is my sweet spot of balance. And I have a cross here where my sleeve touches the bodice armhole of the garment. There, let me set the camera down. And now I can create my raglan line. Again, I can do the same thing. You can connect it anywhere you want. If you want to actually eliminate this dart, I can connect this center of the neck with this and create a beautiful line and then I don't have to worry about sewing the, the neckline uh, dart or taking it somewhere else. So why don't I do that? You can do it with a straight ruler or I think I would like to do it again with a shallow part of the French curve because I think this might look more um, harmonious. Okay, so just, it looks like a straight line, but it's really not. Or maybe this one, no, I think the other way. You can play with your design and decide what you want to create. So I'm connecting the cross, the red cross part of the pattern with the bottom of the new dart. And I will show you, bringing the camera close. Do you see the red line? This is, it's going into the dart point. And this way I can just sew this in the seam and I don't have to worry about putting the dart somewhere else. I will now put the camera down and I will cut on that red line that I just marked. This is my red line. Here, can, I think you can see what I'm going to do. I am cutting along the red line. It's a slight curve, not a terrible, terribly curved one. So now, the back looks like this. You can see against the blue background that this is actually almost a straight red line. Do you see that? And the sleeve looks like this. The sleeve looks like this. This is the bottom of the sleeve. Oh, you can't see. I'm going to move it. Here, you can see here. This is the bottom of the sleeve. This is the center of the sleeve. And the seam now extends into the shoulder. This little bit is what's left of my neck. And this is going to become part of one continuous raglan seam. And again, as I did in the front, I am going to put a little bit more tape to secure it. So it doesn't fall apart like that. So now it's it's looking like this. So there is nothing for me to do on the back. I'm going to put it aside, but I want to show you how to get 
the final tracing of the sleeve. I'm putting the sleeve back together like this. So this is, you can see now where we started. This is part up to here, up to the cap of the sleeve. This is where um, we traced off a set in sleeve block, just very, very simply. Then I found the center of the sleeve, folded it in half, and I cut in a four inch long concave dart, which in total opened up to one inch because I subtracted one inch from each side of the center. And these pieces are now becoming a part of the raglan part of the sleeve. But they look a little bit odd and awkward. And of course, I have to blend all the little unattractive corners and, and harsh um, lines. So I will get a piece of paper put on top of this and show you what to do with this. I will now show you how to trace each half, the front half and the back half separately. And then we'll chat about what to do, whether you're going to have a seam here or were they going to sew a dart. So I'm going to start with the front. I have my front uh, sleeve um, and I'm putting a piece of paper on top of it. And you should secure the paper to the, to the um, paper underneath. I just want to pin it. I don't want it to shift or move. So I'm just pinning it together, do you see that? One at the top and one pin at the bottom. Okay, so some parts are going to be very, very simple. I'm just going to use a straight ruler. If this is the length of the sleeve I want, this is where you can make the sleeve longer or shorter. So I'm tracing off the back of the sleeve and the side seam of the sleeve. There's no change there. And I'm also tracing the, the straight part of the sleeve. So this is before that concave dart appeared. Okay, so now with the French curve, I'm going to trace, I'm going to trace what will be the shoulder raglan seam of this. So this will, long, will run along the top of the shoulder and I need a French curve for this. I'm going to find here, I am going to, there is a sharp corner here. I will lift the paper in a second. There's, there was a sharp corner here, so I eliminated this. And I will continue to the top. This is the little part of my neck in the front. This is front neck. I am going to turn the paper this way and this is part of the French curve that matches it and I will use the part of the French curve to finish this so I also have a kind of an unfortunate you know sharp corner right here but I want everything to be smooth and rounded and well blended so I am going to just curve it with a French curve to blend it Okay, and, okay, so I'm going to say that this is front raglan sleeve, and I am going to give it a grain line. And the grain line does not change. It runs parallel to the center of the sleeve. There it is, it's very important. Even more important um, on pattern pieces that look odd, okay? I will move the camera and then we'll take a photo so you can see it later. It looks like this. Do you see how I bypassed everything, every little nook and cry that didn't look right? I blended it and so the front now looks like this. I'm going to put it aside and do the same on the back. This is my back piece. Okay, and the back piece also looks like this, a little bit odd. But not to worry, we're going to take care of it. So this is my piece of paper that goes on top of the back. And I will pin the 
the blank paper to the pattern underneath. Like this. And I'm going to start tracing. I will start tracing by tracing the hem first, the straight pieces first. And this is the center of my sleeve before the concave dart starts. This is the side of my seam for the sleeve. And now I get to do the same as I did before. I have all these odd little spaces and these strange little corners here and there. I'm going to blend everything and just make it look nice. The nicer you make it look in the pattern, the more successful you're going to be when you sew it. So this is the bottom part of the armhole. And now I have, I'm not sure you can see this, I have this odd little corner right here. Of course I can't have a corner like that. So I'm going to make it like into a gentle curve versus into a corner. I'm gonna lose maybe an eighth of an inch of it, but this will make it look a lot nicer. So I just lost one of the pins. I'm almost done, so it doesn't matter. Like this. And finish this like this. And now I'm going to turn it so I can use a ruler to trace part of my neck. And the same with the other side of the French curve. Trace this. And this is almost a straight line from here, okay? I will lift up the camera and bring it closer so you can hopefully see a little bit better what I did. And I will take photos for you to see at the end of the video. This is my finished pattern for the Ruglan sleeve. Uh, the important part here is to note that they are not the back and the front are not symmetrical. Do you see how the front has a different angle and the back has a different angle? Why is that? Well, the reason is the armhole at the front and the back does not look the same. If you remember, the armhole on the block for the front is angled a different way to accommodate the arm moving forward, and the back uh, armhole on the back is angled to accommodate your arms also stretching forward and covering the back part of, uh, of your shoulder blade and back. So this is why they look like this. If you ended up with something that leans more to the front and less to the back, this is actually correct. Let's take a look at the markings because these are such odd looking patterns if, you don't, um, if you're not used to them that it's very easy to get confused. So I wrote front Ruglan sleeve, back Ruglan sleeve. I also have a front notch, so when I cut out my pattern for the sleeve, I can notch it and tell myself that this is the front. I have a double notch on the back for the same reason. I also clearly identified the hem. You see, this is a hem. And I also wrote CSL, CSL on both. This is center sleeve, center sleeve. These are side seams, so I will never confuse when I actually sew these together with the parts of the bodice. So how would you deal with this? You have two different pieces of the sleeve. You can just add seam allowances all the way around, the front and the back, add the hem, and just continue to construct uh, the Rublin sleeve as um, I showed you in uh, construction level one in person class. However, if you don't want to have a seam down the side of the sleeve, what you can do is join this like this along the center of the sleeve because this is a straight line. So this does not have to be a seam. You can do another tracing or tape it together and treat this as one piece of fabric. And this becomes sort of like a giant dart to shape the shoulder. This is all we need to do to construct a Ruglan sleeve out of a satin sleeve. But I want to show you one more thing. I'm working on a summer dress. I It's not ready, but um, the Ruglan part of the sleeve is sewn. And I will show you on the mannequin uh, fine points of why a Ruglan sleeve works very well when it's designed this way. I want to show you an example of a Ruglan sleeve done on a dress that's um, you know, fairly dressy. It's a linen and silk and cotton blend with a little bit of uh, shine. It has a metallic thread. If you see there's a metallic, that's why it's so shiny and reflective. 
uh, woven into it. And Rufflin often has a reputation for being something that creates a bulky, almost like a sweatshirt or a hoodie type look. But Rufflin, done the way that I showed you in this video, can be um, uh, quite an elegant uh, design. And so I want to bring it closer to show you the Rufflin lines. Do you see? It's kind of hard to see, but my Rufflin lines here are not a straight line. They have a slight curve right here. You can see that in this area right here, so that you can see the mannequin has no arms, but it has a little bit of a shoulder. So when the arm goes in here, you can see that there will be no bulk or excess fabric here. This is because we design it with the armhole um, that was taken from a well-fitting block for the set-in sleeve. And I will show you the back. The back also has a very nice fit. Do you see there's this, this, all this excess is because there's no arm. Do you see that? The mannequin has no arm. And this is my Ruglan seam right here. It's a gentle curve going under the arm. You can see that this is, nothing is pulling. It doesn't create any bulk in the back. It doesn't fit the mannequin, unfortunately. The hip on the mannequin is a lot wider than my hip. So I can't pull it. That's why it's wrinkling on this side. I can't pull it far enough not to wrinkle, but I will show you the side that looks a little bit better. So you can see I'm not finished. Hopefully I'll finish it soon. And so this is the design of a dress that's not at all casual. It's not um, meant to be for sportswear. It has a nice bulk-free design for Ruglan. And do you see how nicely it skims the shoulder? So the, the shoulder of the mannequin stops here. This is all just emptiness, but this is the set and sleeve seam that I feel here. And this flows over very nicely without it being bulky and just sort of puddling here. The reason is because we incorporated that concave dart. It shaped the sleeve to the shoulder. The way we do it on a set and sleeve is with a little bit of gathering or easing when we put the sleeve into the regular armhole. And so we substituted this with a little bit of a dart.